Hey everybody, we have an Australian Labradoodle puppy litter update for you today. These Australian Labradoodles are three weeks old and in today's video we're going to tell you a little bit about each one of these little Labradoodle puppies and we're also going to tell you what the litter has accomplished overall during the past week. We'll give you an update on Mama Labradoodle Misha and we're also going to be talking about socialization and desensitization of the puppies. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Nuyl uh, Labradoodles and these are the puppies from our Licorice Twist Litter. These little Labradoodle puppies are now three weeks old. And what does that mean? Well, their whole world has changed in uh, so many ways. The puppies now all can see and here their ears are opened if you can see really closely when you're right up next to them you can actually see that the ears canal is open misha's just got to go and check them all now and make sure that everybody's clean for their video so you can imagine what a big change this is for the puppies you go from not being able to see or hear to all of a sudden you can see everything around you and you can hear everything it's a lot of overwhelming sensations. This is a really critical time for your puppy and this is when a lot of things are shaped and memories are made that stay with your puppy for the rest of their lives. So the other thing that's going on with the puppies is they're also way more mobile now. They can stand up and they're steady enough on their feet that they don't fall over all the time and so now they're starting to interact with one another. So we see them playing a little bit and they will also start playing with toys oh probably in the next day or two and the other thing that's probably Misha's favorite thing about the whole process at this point is the puppies are able to go to the bathroom on their own now now Misha will still clean them she'll still stimulate them to go she'll still check and make sure everything's working as it should be but and she is also still cleaning up after them for the most part but she's starting to phase out that part of her duties and once these little puppies start eating uh, solid food which will happen next week then Misha will begin to back off on those duties even more so it's a very critical transition period the puppies are going from being really helpless infants to now being a little bit like you would expect with approximately a one and a half year old child where they're just learning how to walk and talk and negotiate the world. So it's a really fun time and an important time. So right away, what we're doing with these puppies already is starting to work on socializing and desensitizing them. Now in a lot of things you'll read, um, and even in the book that I recommend for all of our families to read, which is Sophia Lin's book, uh, Yin's book rather, Perfect Puppy in Seven Days. A lot of those books were written a few years ago and when socialization was not as well known, it hadn't been studied as much and there wasn't as much information. And generally what, what was said in most of those books and the approach that was being taken was to expose your dog constantly to new things and new people. So you often ran into the saying, a hundred new people in the first hundred days was how you socialized your puppy. I'm just gonna see if I can get Misha to actually come in the bed so it's easier for the puppies. Come here, see, Misha. Come on, that's a hop up. Do you wanna come in the bed? She's a little bit worried about that because she doesn't wanna step on them. So, all right, maybe the puppies will come out to her instead. And then maybe she'll lie down for them. And do you wanna put that down there? There we go, there. And maybe what we can do is just grab that crate mat out of the crate there. And we'll put that down for the puppies. And maybe Misha will use it. And I'll bet you after I do all of this, then she'll decide that she's going to go and get in the bed or something. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Best laid plans. Here you go, little pinky. You want to wake up? So let's see if everybody goes and, and tries that and if Misha cooperates and makes it a little easier for them. There we go. Just turn them around. 
So as I was saying, you quite often will read and see where uh, the suggestion is 100 new people in the first 100 days with your puppy. And that's all well and good. However, if you're doing that and your puppy isn't enjoying it and they aren't finding the experience positive, then what are you doing? Well, you're teaching your puppy that new things are not something that they really want to do. And that's the opposite of the goal of proper socialization for your puppy. Correct, proper, and complete socialization means that your puppy welcomes new experiences, meeting new people, and trying new things, whatever they may be. And how do we get our puppies to have that sort of mindset? Well, basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that every experience that your puppy has that's new is associated with something that they really like, a positive experience, so that then they think whenever something new happens, something good is going to happen. So when you take your puppy home from here, that is easily accomplished with treats because your puppy's going to be eight weeks old and ready to start appreciating participating in and enjoying treats. At this age, treats are not on the menu because they don't even have their teeth yet. So they can't be enjoying treats. And it's not something that gives them a positive experience. So instead, how do we create that positive experience? Well, here's a good example. When these puppies first go outside for the first time, we'll take mom outside as well. After they've been out for a bit, we'll bring mom out and we'll let them do just what they're doing right now, nurse. So right now, here we are, we're downstairs in our puppy family room. This is not where the puppies live. The puppies live upstairs in the doodle den. So this is a new experience for them. So we have mom here, they're nursing. So what did they just learn? They learned that, oh, being down here is something new. And look, it's great because mom is here. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about doing socialization the right way and forming the proper association in your puppy's mind that new things equal something good, something comforting, something fun, and then later on something tasty. Mom is the most comforting thing for a puppy at this age. So whenever we're doing something new, we make sure that mom's right there so that in their mind, they can associate whatever they just did that was new with mom and nursing. Nothing's more comforting for a puppy than nursing. And that's why you'll see puppies, even when there's nothing in the milk bar, still nursing. It's that feeling of being right up next to mom and all that comfort that comes with it. And that's also why these donut beds are so good when you take your puppy home because this donut bed mimics that whole feel of being like they are right now, right up close, leaning into mom and nursing. So it all goes together, it all goes hand in hand with how we get the puppy set up for success and already well socialized when they come to you. Now desensitization is a part of socialization and indeed it's very similar to socialization. And what we're doing when we desensitize a puppy is getting them to be accustomed to strange things. So that involves sounds and uh, movement and different smells, temperatures, different surfaces for them to walk on, things like that. So we've already started that process with the puppies. So in their room where they are, they have an X-pen around their area. And so it starts with something simple just as like this. Soon as the puppies can hear, we rattle the X-Pen every now and then so that they become used to that and they're not afraid of it. When we come in, we often have a towel, we flap it around so they become used to that and they're not afraid of something happening over their heads. They have a television for themselves. They listen to all sorts of different music. They listen to all sorts of different soundtracks that we have for them, which is thunder and lightning and sirens and all sorts of different things. They can hear our washer and dryer. The vacuum is on all the time. And there are other puppies in there that they hear too. So pretty soon all of those noises, which are part of everyday life are just like, oh yeah, 
it's nothing. They have absolutely zero impact on them. And that's the goal with desensitization. So then we also have different surfaces for the puppies to be on. So right now they're on this floor, which is a little bit slippery and it's a little bit cold. It's definitely not what they're normally on. And you can see that nobody's really too fussed by that. Uh, they are just like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Mom's here. So that, again, is all part of the process. So you don't want to ever have your puppy doing something they don't want to do. So when I was a kid, my mom was bound and determined that I was going to learn to ski. I had zero desire to learn how to ski. I hated being cold. I wasn't really interested in doing anything remotely related to skiing. I wanted to ride horses, but my mom was quite sure that I should learn how to ski. But I so much didn't want to learn how to ski that every time it was my lesson day, I got sick. I, could, I would literally be ill because I so much didn't want to do that. So you do not want that happening with your puppy. You don't want to force them into doing something. You may want them to go, say, paddle boarding with you. And what if your puppy goes, oh, no way, I'm not getting on that paddle board. What are you thinking? So it, rather than putting your puppy on there, forcing them on the paddle board and going out paddle boarding, so all you do with that is teach them to hate paddle boarding and be petrified of it for the rest of their lives. Instead, what you want to do is just have the paddle board out. You could even have it in your house or out on the floor in your garage. And you just walk around with your puppy and as soon as you see your puppy looking at the paddle board, you mark it with a yes and treat them and go, yeah. Then you work up to getting your puppy to put the paw on the paddle board. Yes. And another treat. And you keep moving on in very little steps and rewarding, rewarding, rewarding. <clears throat> Excuse me. Until you've got your puppy sitting on the paddle board on dry land. Then the next step is to move the paddle board down to the water, repeat, or if your puppy's quite happy to go and sit on the paddle board, as soon as it's near the water, then you're going to put it just gently in the water to a small, just part way in. And that's how you do it. You just do it in small increments and make every step, yay, way to go, this is wonderful, and treat them with whatever payment they prefer. Now puppies get paid and they get paid in different ways because each puppy has a different preferred form of payment. Some of them like the treats more than anything. Perfect, that's easy. Some of them just want you to say, good dog, and give them a little bit of love. And that's easy too. And some of them like to have a bit of both. So it's really a matter of reading your puppy, understanding when they're afraid, and understanding what they like as their reward. Now, one other thing you need to keep in mind is your puppy has to always feel that you've got their back, that you're safe for them. So you see the puppies right now are all nursing and you can see they're all totally relaxed and happy. And Misha's providing the milk bar and that's great. So that's a form of comfort to teach them that this experience right now is, is a positive one. But the other thing she's going to be teaching them is because they can't nurse forever. So let's say they were down here for uh, two hours. Well, they're not going to nurse for two hours. The other thing they would be feeling is that Misha is here. Her mere physical presence is enough to provide them with comfort because they know Misha will look after them. They've already learned that whenever another dog walks by here or a strange person, Misha will be up right away. She'll be barking and she'll likely growl at them. She'll put herself in front of her puppies, in between her puppies and whatever she sees as a threat. And for Misha, any strange person, any dog, even dogs who she lives with here at our home are all threats to her puppies. Mama dogs will literally lay their lives down for their puppies. That instinct overwhelms and overrides anything else for all mama dogs. And these puppies know that and they've learned that, they've seen that, it's been part of their lives from the moment they've been born. Even before they could see and hear, they were well aware that they were in a safe spot and being protected. So then when you get your puppy, that's your job to take over from Misha. You don't have to lay your life down for your puppy as hopefully you'll never be in that situation. But you do need to make your, feel, your puppy feel that you can be trusted, relied on, and that you will always keep them safe. Now one thing with that, as the caveat for that, you don't want to go overboard and fussy pot over them so that they became, become little trembling creatures. So let's say you're out in the backyard and your puppy's playing and you have a, a low step off your deck and they fall off the step. So that might scare them and they might go, oh, 
and you know they might cry they might run away all you have to do is go get your puppy if they don't come running to you right away pick them up and just give them some gentle comfort just distract them exactly like you would with a small child who's maybe fallen and scraped their knee but not done anything serious and then you just go back to doing things again don't put them right away back into that situation that caused them the upset wait for a bit dogs live in the moment 20 minutes later they'll have forgotten all about it then you can put them back in that same situation give them a treat reward them give them confidence and they won't be afraid of the situation so sometimes you'll see dogs or you'll hear people say oh my dog is petrified of being on a linoleum floor because they've skidded and something bad's happened well that's because whoever that is hasn't taken the time to fix that situation for the dog and show them that it's okay and and resolve the problem for them so just exactly like you would with a small child let the dog know you're there for them but don't make a big fuss out of them same thing as if a big dog comes and growls at your puppy so while the puppies are here after misha goes home so she'll go home to her family around six weeks from now or now six weeks from now six weeks from when the puppies were born which was uh, may 31st and she'll go home and the puppies will be here but our dogs will be aunties to them now our dogs these aren't their puppies so they're much more strict with them if the puppy does something that's inappropriate they'll growl at them and sometimes that's quite frightening when you're a little puppy so we're always there with them and if a puppy is has been growled at and they start running away and they're scared then all we do is the puppy will run away we'll go find the puppy we'll pick the puppy up just like this and go hey it's okay just hold them like that and then we won't pay any more mind to them we won't look at them we'll just hold on to them up around our neck give them that comfort let just wait till they're settled that the tension's out of their body then we'll put them down again and then in about 15 minutes we'll have whatever dog growled at them come and sit next to us while we hold the puppy on our lap in our legs like this and the adult dog will be here so the puppy's nearby but has all the physical comfort of being in our lap and knows that we're right there and if this adult dog is continuing to growl we'll just say hey it's okay there we go and that's fine and let the puppy know that hey you need to listen to the adults when they tell you that you're doing something that's not appropriate that's all that's required you don't have to be an adult to do it you can be a child you can teach your children how to do this but the puppy needs to be able to uh, feel that they completely trust you and are at home with your protection so that's the main thing now the other main thing that these puppies are going to be doing over the next week is starting to be weaned a bit so right now misha is their only source of food and she will continue that for the next week but in next week uh, we will start putting these puppies onto their solid food we want to make sure they have their teeth and we want to make sure that they're ready for that and Misha will also be our guide so we let our mamas guide us more than anything and the puppies of course so Misha will start showing us when she's ready to wean them she'll be not wanting to nurse them as much she'll be asking to be out more right now when she's out away from the puppies she only leaves them for mm, about 15 minutes at the most and then that's it she wants to be back in and, and checking them and making sure that everything's okay over the next week we'll see those times start to lengthen and at the end of the fourth week we'll have her not even sleeping with them right now she can still get away from them at night if she wants and when we notice that she's sleeping away from them more and more then that's our cue that it's time to start feeding them some solid food and when we put it out for the puppies if they totally ignore it then we know it's a bit early if they go to it and they're like oh yeah this is good then we know we've got the timing right so normally about four weeks is is when moms decide that yep that's it time to start teaching the kids to uh, eat on their own so that's uh, most of what the litter has been up to and what they've accomplished and what's coming up over the next week and uh, now we will go through each of the puppies and we'll do their updates in terms of their weights so I'm going to just get uh, Reynolds to help me put them all back in the bed here so that we all have them all handy and not all over the, the area here so we can get them all and show them to you and go through them in their birth order. They're uh, just a sweet little, oh, one, somebody's got a little bit of stuffing on them there. 
That must be from a toy that probably Ripple has ripped open. They're just a really nice, sweet group of puppies. They're very quiet. Uh, we don't hear much from them yet. Once they learn the outside, though, I'm sure that we'll start hearing from them uh, more and more. And Misha, do you want to go out now? Do you, do you want to go out? Maybe we'll just put you out so the puppies aren't going to bother you anymore. There we go, Misha. Here, you want to go see Daddy? There we go. And there. Out you go. Thanks for coming and visiting with us. That's a good girl. And there goes Misha. She's quite happy to be removed from them and not have them always nursing all the time. But you'll see she'll come right around probably and keep a close eye and make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong with them. So we're going to go through the puppies in birth order and uh, tell you a little bit about each of them. So the first born in this litter is dark blue collar boy. And our first four puppies are all boys and the last three are all girls. So this is one of our beautiful ebony puppies with lots of white flash, beautiful goatee, white on the chest and then these white dip toes. And Mr. Dark Blue Collar, he is just a sweet guy. Look at that gorgeous head. I really love the puppy's heads in this litter. Beautiful, nice, broad, stocky heads, little short nose and nice high ear sets just like the breed standard asks for. So Mr. Dart Blue Collar is 874 grams. Really a nice weight, doing really well in terms of weight gain. Then next we have Red Collar. Now Red Collar is our giant in the litter. He is the biggest puppy. Oh, and I should show you too, I'll do it on light blue collar. Mr. Red Collar. This is our giant boy. What a doll this guy is. Oh my goodness. I can already tell you he's going to be a gentle, sweet soul. He's just the sweetest little guy. And at three weeks, he also already has both of his testicles, which is really quite early for, for a puppy, but they're both already fully descended and there you can feel them. Mr. Red is 1.32 kilograms. Oh my goodness, this is a big boy. Do is a big boy. Yes, you are. And you're so snuggly. I think he might be a sable. He has beautiful mahogany highlights up through his nose and over the top of his head. So he may end up developing more of those mahogany highlights. Um, and, and that may not be because he's a sable either. Now Misha did the same thing. She, she had absolutely outstanding mahogany coloring for a period of time before, he, uh, before she silvered. So that may be what Red is going to do too. Lots of white on the chest here, those white dip toes, and this little sweetie pie does have the little white tip at the end of his tail. I always like the little white tip, don't I? Mm -hmm. So at 1.32 kilograms, this is our biggest puppy. Mwah! Next we have green collar. And oh, green. You are over here. Green Collar is another beautiful ebony. I just absolutely love how shiny and gleaming these coats are. This little guy is our solid boy. He is one handsome puppy. He has that really gorgeous face and you can see he has super strong eye contact. He always has his eye turned right to see me. He too has some of those beautiful mahogany highlights what you got on there? You got a little bit of a dust on you there. That's a good boy, big yawn. Very, very strong eye contact from this puppy though, and that is evident all the time. No matter what's going on or what you're doing with him, he always is looking right at you, aren't you? Oh, yes. Do you want to look at the camera? So everybody how pretty you are. A handsome, yes, you're a handsome boy, aren't you? And Mr. Green is 1.02 kilograms. So again, really nice weight. All the puppies, the, all the boy puppies are over a kilogram, except for dark blue, who's just under a kilogram. Next is light blue. Now light blue, I'm going to show you the other thing that's happening with the puppies this week, and that's that the coats are starting to lift. So if you look on this little guy's ruff right around his neck, you'll see all of you got into some toy stuffing. Oops, sorry, I know you don't like that when I don't hold your bottom. Okay, see, there we go. There, okay, there, good boy. There, now there's a really good example of a puppy who was having n not real distress, but he was annoyed and easy. All you do is show him that you've got him, get him all settled and 
it's all over and done with and there's no worries there's no worries yeah so you can see here his coat is coming up and it's not that sleek sort of lab looking coat it's starting to poof up into that absolutely adored teddy bear look that Australian Labradoodle puppies have so usually it is around the neck area that we see the coat lifting also down around the hind legs so Mr. Light Blue Collar has lots of good examples of that thank you for sharing with your coat and he's got that beautiful goatee as well a little bit of white on his chest again those white dip dipped toes and no spot at the end of the tail for Mr. Light Blue no 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 and this little guy he is 1.06 kilograms that's how much you weigh yeah, what a good boy you are. <gasps> what a good boy. So even already at this age, the, even though their ears are just open, we already want to be very mindful of the tone of voice we're using with the puppies. So they begin to always, or continue to always associate us with something pleasant. Now the first of the girls is our pink collar girl. And pink collar girl is our teeny one in the litter. This is our smallest puppy. And this puppy, even though she doesn't look anything like her brothers, she is also a black puppy. Genetically speaking, she's black. Now she is a black sable and she looks just like Papa Cloud. She has all of Cloud's absolutely gorgeous, different hues and striations. And she's so tired, she can't even open up her eyes. <laughs> she's just going to sleep in my arms. And now as time goes by, well, you've seen already, <laughs> Oh, here we go. We're just so tired, just so exhausted after that big meal at the milk bar. You've seen this puppy over the last three weeks and her color has already started to change and it will continue to change. And even before she goes home at eight weeks, she is going to have some different coloring going on. But she will continue to have those dark points around her ears, her eyes, around her muzzle, and at the bottom of her paws. But the rest of her coat will probably clear out a bit. If you go to our website and look at the Our Dogs page and check on Cloud, you'll see probably what she's going to look like as an adult. And our little tiny Miss Pink Collar Girl is 771 grams. So it's just a little tiny bit of perfection. Yes, they're just so beautiful. This is, to me, the thing that's so great about Sable, is every single puppy is different every single time. And they all have completely unique looks, and I just think that's so cool. So that's our pretty little angel girl there, who is just far too tired to really perk up and even interact with us right now. So I'll just put her right down next to her brother there so she can, or the, her sister rather, so she can snuggle up and, oh, she says, no, I'm gonna go hang out with my brothers. I'm gonna go get a good pillow there. That's a girl. Next we have Mint Collar Girl. And Mint is also a black sable same genetic coloring as pink collar but she looks totally different completely different look to this puppy because her coat base is much more black now this is an adorable puppy i just love this puppy she has the cutest little face beautiful little expression she's got nice eye contact and then you can see her sabling is sort of like phantom markings so you see them across the chest as you would on a phantom side of the face, inside the ear, above the eyebrows. You can see them on the inside of her leg here coming up the top. And you can see it also under her bum there. So all the same places as phantom markings, but these are sable markings, not phantom. A lot of breeders who don't have sable puppies very often, often get confused and think, oh, I have a phantom, or what we call a weak phantom when the colors are somewhat subdued like this. But indeed, this is a sable, not a phantom. And this is one little doll of a puppy, isn't she? I drew my little doll? No. And Miss Mint Collar is 931 grams. So she's uh, just a little bit bigger than pink and also very tired. And then last but not least, our final girl is Yellow Collar Girl. And she's different from everybody because she is a chocolate puppy. Now she may be sable or she may be chocolate. And 
unless this girl goes as a breeding dog. We do have a breeder reservation in this litter. It's for my mentee Beth from uh, England. Her program is Lily Hill Labradoodles. And one of these beautiful puppies is going to be going and joining Beth in her program. Beth's going to come and stay with us for a few days in July and get a little bit more hands-on uh, mentorship while she's here. So we're really looking forward to that. But this little girl, unless she goes to Beth, if this is who we decide is the best option for Beth, uh, we'll never know is she a chocolate or a sable because we wouldn't just be testing her because it doesn't matter unless you are doing breeding. And even if you're breeding, you don't always have to know. It's just if you're looking for something very specific, then you want to have that DNA testing done so you know, oh, I have sable and sable, so I'm going to get sables in my litter. This little girl is also far too tired to be on camera. Apparently our girls are all very sleepy today. Again, that very pretty head, beautiful, nice short nose, really nice puppy. And you can tell they hear now because when I put my face near, they're doing this because it's like, oh, because they're still learning what sound is. So this little girl, my little yellow collar is 889 grams. So she is the second smallest out of all of the girls. So pink is 771, mint is 931, and yellow is 889. So that's all of our puppies. We hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to make, please feel free to post them in the comments here. I'm always happy to talk about Labradoodles and answer any questions you may have. And if you have a sec and can give us a thumbs up because you liked our video, please do so. We always appreciate that. And we hope that uh, you're subscribed to our channel and have clicked that bell icon so you get notified each time uh, one of our new videos is out. And we'll see you all here again next week for the four week update for these Australian Labradoodle puppies from the Licorice Twist Litter. Thanks so much for watching.